Come on, everyone, let's go. Where? To the world of plants. Come on. How lovely it is here. There must be millions of plants here. Brightly colored, spotlessly clean flowers. All kinds of fruits. Vegetables. Trees, how beautiful they all are. Let us now have a closer look at the members of this world. Let us learn how they reproduce and see what techniques they use. You all know that even giant trees grow from a tiny little seed. But do you know where these tiny seeds come from? I was once just a tiny seed too. I am really curious to learn just how I came into being. In order for a seed to form, the female cell inside the plant has to combine with a male reproductive cell from another plant, in other words, with pollen. But how do they manage that? Plants can't move. You are right, plants cannot move, but God has created various ways by which pollen from one plant can reach another. A lot of pollen is carried by the wind. Some people don't like this because these tiny grains cause a lot of people to suffer allergic reactions in the spring. Achoo! I get this every spring. A grain of pollen starts turning into a seed when it reaches that part of another plant containing the egg cell. Some plants use special carriers to send their pollen to other plants. The most common of these are insects. Flowers produce food that insects like and attract them with their bright colors and perfumes. That means they are able to pass on their pollens to them. They then carry those pollens to other plants. The harmony between these different life forms becomes clearer when we have a close look at the relationship between flowers and insects. Here is one example. This flower which grows in southern Africa is known as the iris. It is very difficult for carrier insects to reach the food and pollens made by this attractive flower. But look! There is a long tube under its leaves. The food and pollens are all at the bottom of this tube. The insect that will carry the pollens also needs a long tube to reach them. It is like us using a straw to drink from the bottom of a tall bottle.
And here is an insect that can reach this plant's pollen, a hoverfly. Thanks to its long tube, or proboscis, it can reach right into the depths of the flower. And it can hover in the air like a helicopter. Special signs are used to enable a helicopter to make a safe landing. Do you wonder if the hoverfly has anything similar? Let us have a closer look now at the white arrows on the surface of the flower. They are all pointing to a single spot and showing the hoverfly which way to go. The hoverfly is thus able to make a successful landing at exactly the right spot. Let us now think about what we have just seen. The flower is an unconscious part of an unconscious plant. It has no eyes, ears, hands, or brain to think with. Yet, it has signs on it telling the insect which way to go. The flower itself is even unaware of these. As for the insect, it has no consciousness or intelligence either. Yet it possesses all the special features it needs to reach the pollen. It is Almighty God who creates the flower and the insect to be compatible with one another. God knows what characteristics every living thing needs and gives them the most appropriate ones. God reveals this in our holy book, the Quran. Everyone in the heavens and the earth belongs to Him. All are submissive to Him. Flowers that give off perfumes. Some plants use a quite interesting technique to attract insects. They offer them perfume. This orchid that lives in South America produces a special perfume in its leaves. The customers for this scent are male bees. Human beings use perfumes to smell nice too. Ooh, that smells so good. Bees want to smell nice, just like humans do. When a bee arrives to take perfume from the orchid, the flower also gives the visitor its pollens. How? Let's have a look and see. The entrance to where the perfume is 